In 2021, nearly 107,000 Americans died of a drug overdose, and 75% of those deaths involved an opioid. Yet a recent study found only one in five adults with opioid use disorder are getting medications that could save their lives. In today's HealthCast, we learn what can be done to turn those numbers around. According to the National Survey on Drug Abuse and Health, an estimated 2.5 million Americans suffer from opioid use disorder. But Dr. Andrew Migliaccio, a psychiatrist and the medical director for Memorial Outpatient Behavioral Health, believes the survey findings greatly underestimate the true figure. It's probably two or three times greater uh, than 2.5 million. It might be six or seven million. So obviously there's a huge public health interest in making sure that these people are connected to the care that they need. While the study did not explain why 80% of people who need help aren't getting it, he says long-held beliefs may come into play. There's kind of this historical um, concept that you're not sober if you're taking medications, but we have, I think, taken great strides to kind of redefine um, you know, what recovery looks like. And oftentimes recovery is assisted by medication support, which allows people to become stable and live more normal lives. Those medications include buprenorphine, suboxone, naltrexone, vivitrol, and some cases methadone, which are all considered safe and effective. One of the findings in the study was that people who received these life-saving medications were actually more likely to have received treatment via telehealth. So telehealth seems to be one potential solution for providing this necessary care. With the right treatment, studies have shown not only a reduction in relapse, but that patients are getting back to a full and productive life. That's what we try to move people towards, is really living a life worth uh, while for them. Among adults with opioid use disorder, some groups were found to be less likely to receive medications, including black adults, women, those who were unemployed, and those in more rural areas.